Yeah, good morning. This is Captain Ron. Uh, today I'd like to uh, show you how to replace, remove, replace the new bushings in your auto gyro road ahead and also the hub bar. And uh, you can actually do this on the aircraft. If you leave the road ahead on the aircraft, just make sure you uh, stabilize it so it doesn't move while you're performing uh, the uh, removal operation. And uh, for this video, I have a, an old road ahead here, and we're going to do it here on the bench. Uh, just remember, if you decide to do it on the aircraft, you want to put some duct tape over this area where the bearing is, and also uh, protect your aircraft from getting uh, your shavings, because you're going to have to tap with a, with a tap. You're going to have to tap the bushing. So, and you get a lot of metal shavings that fall off and you don't want to contaminate the road ahead or you don't want to get them on the aircraft. So, auto gyro offers, and also this is for all three models, the auto gyro. Uh, this is the bushing kits. You want to make sure you get this bushing 36039 and then this bushing kit 33836. Uh, you'll need parts from both bushing kits to perform this, uh, complete this operation. All right, first of all, you start with this tap, and you want to put a little anti-seize on this tap. It, it can be aluminum anti-seize or copper anti-seize. And you start your tap, try to start it straight. Uh, I've, I've already pre-tapped a little bit of this to get it started. And then you would go ahead and Continue to tap this And you want to make sure you tap it all the way through and you'll notice metal shavings are going to fall out of this as you continue to turn the tap You may have to go backwards a little bit to clear it to clear the threads clear the shavings It's actually a pretty neat device. Bring it all the way through. It's coming through. Now that tap, this tap is tapered, so just because you see the threads here, you got to continue to tap. To get it all the way through because you're going to have to put a an extraction bolt through these. Okay, it's good now. We can back that all the way out. Okay, <clears throat> then we take this bolt. See, we've actually, uh, this, I already replaced one, but you can see the, the threads in there. All right, then you take this bolt that comes with a kit, you thread it and put the washer on it, thread it in there. You may need a wrench to do that. That's a 7 8 inch wrench. I don't know what millimeter it is, but it should go in there pretty easily. Now, this is also an adapter. You notice it's, uh, it's got a larger hole there and a smaller hole there. This is to put so it'll clear the bushing. Because as you extract the bushing, this bushing needs clearance. So that's what that large hole is for. So you would put this on the large hole first so it clears the bushing. And keep threading this bolt through. go then you put the other washer and the nut on this end you want to make sure 
you leave so remember as you're pulling it through you have to have some some bolt left if you if you bring it all the way up here then you have no no bolt left to, to extract that bushing so you got to back it off a little bit at this point you can either use two wrenches or what I have here a seven to eight seven eighth inch box in and a adjustable I don't have another seven eight so that's why I'm doing it this way and you hold this head of the bolt and you turn the other the nut and as I'm doing this it's extracting that that bushing out of there as you can see this part of the bolt is becoming less visible it's really easy to do and you may have to bring this bolt out a little bit more because we're not fully extracted yet just move this bolt out some more make sure you leave enough bolt in here so you have threads on that nut and then just continue to tighten this nut up here and it's and you'll feel it when it's all the way out there it's, it's pretty much out now see it's loose okay Take that off. Take this off. There we go. And we've extracted the bushing. Pretty slick. All right. Now we want to put in the new bushing and with a kit. You buy a, a teeter bolt kit. In the kit, you get two large bushings, two longer bushings. This is for the hub bar, and we're going to also show you how to put new bushings in the hub bar. And then you get the two short bushings for the road ahead. So I've already done one. Now, this is important. You want to make sure you get the, the flange part of that bushing on the inside. And there's also a seam in that bushing. Now you've got, to, you've got to orientate that shit, the seam, towards the road head, down towards the road head. Because of the weight of the aircraft, when you're flying, the, uh, the teeter bolt is, all the weight is on the upper part of this shim, this bushing. So let's get this started. You can just kind of, kind of push it in and get it started here. Get it straight. Now this is another apparatus and you notice that fits in there so we're going to compress that and push that shim in so to do that you need this long threaded bolt and then you put that in there you put a always use a washer and a nut This will go all the way through the other bushing. There you go. Make sure that's seated and tight. Do all this by hand until it's all set up. Then you take the wrenches. Two box in. I do have uh, a 13 millimeter, which is the same as a half inch. I got one of each. So then you can just... Bring it in. You can feel that bushing kind of feel it sliding in. A little snug, don't get don't get too heavy on the wrenches. You don't want to damage that flange.
and we'll remove all this mechanism. There you go. The bushing is nice, it's installed properly, and it's not damaged. Okay, here we are back again. Uh, we showed you how to install the bushings in the road ahead. Now we're going to do the hub bar. Uh, all right, you, you, you obviously you only have one way to do this. You've got to remove the blades from the hub bar and put it into a vise and make sure you use soft jaw chucks okay so you don't damage or put stress marks on the hub bar and uh, they're the same size bushings the only difference is in the hub bar these are the rota head bushings they're shorter the hub bar requires a longer bushing so you get two of them in there and you pretty much got almost a full length on the teeter bolt for support and lubricant as it as it teeters back and forth okay so make sure uh, when you finish with the road ahead bushing replacements that you you clean the tap off and you notice the tap is a little tapered that's to allow you to start tapping in in, in a straight keeping it parallel and, and make sure the tap is not crooked and you also again you want to put a little anti-seize on it I've started tapping this already. So it, the critical part of tapping the bushings, whether it's in the hub bar or the road ahead, is to go slow and make sure it taps in straight. Okay? And once you get it started, you continue to tap. Now these are long... longer bushings so they're going to take a little more tapping I want to go backwards a little to kind of clear it break the chips loose there we go you really don't have to go all the way through this because all you need is enough thread. Let me, let me stop here a minute. You just need enough thread, probably the same amount of threads, just to get a good grip on it. So if you don't have enough thread engagement, then you're gonna strip the bushing out and then you're in real trouble because I don't know how to extract it after you've done that. So I would suggest we go to the end of that tap so we'll do that. That'd be enough thread. This is a little crooked, you notice that? We're gonna remove this now. I think we've got enough thread engagement. Let's try it out. Let's check it out. This is just a trial fit here. Put the nut on first so we can measure it. See how much we got. Right about there. Okay, we'll leave that nut alone and then we'll back it off and see how much engagement we got. That's about equal to that. So we're good. You don't have to go all the way through with the tap. All right, now. I'm gonna have to put that. Uh, this part here on, remember that? We use that. And we gotta leave that nut on. And we put a washer on.
Here we go. I practiced on the road ahead, but I didn't practice on the hub bar, so this is my first time at it. We just make sure we got it all the way tight in the bushing. Utilize all the threads we can in that bushing. Okay, don't over tighten and that's just snow. Now this fits in, now we can tighten this up and that'll pull that, that bushing out. Hopefully. I don't know if they use some kind of Loctite at the factory during the initial one. I knew they, I know they instruct you to take the road ahead part of the road ahead and put it in the oven and heat it up to 200 degrees but we, d we didn't do that and it seems like it works fine without that operation see I can feel the coming out hopefully hopefully the threads aren't stripping now remember this is a long bushing so it's going to take a bit to pull this out. So you just have to be patient. Hopefully we'll have enough bolt here. Yeah, it's starting to get loose now. Yeah. It should just fall off. There we go. That's it. So it's about, we threaded it about halfway through that bushing. So, just when you thread it in, you know, as long as you get about this much in there, it's fine. Okay? All right, now we have to install the new bushing. Uh, now, in this case, the slot in the bushing goes up. Remember, the <laughs> it's probably hard to understand this, but when, when the gyroplane is flying, the rotor blades are trying to pull up. They're actually trying to separate from the gyro. So you have the force like this. So all the force on the hub bar is up on top. I'm, I'm sorry, on the bottom here. It's trying to pull up. So the seam of the bushing you want to install is going to be on the top, like that. Okay? You kind of, kind of mush that in straight, eyeball it, make sure it's straight. Remember, on the road ahead, the seam is down towards the gyroplane. On the road hub, the seam is up. This is the same gadget we use to compress the bushing in with this little adapter. Make sure you got that adapter on right with that little hat shaped part that goes in there, there. And you want to put a, it, you know, this won't harm the new bushing. That's why you put a, bosh, a washer there to protect that the surface of that new bushing that you've already installed in the other side. <clears throat> All right, the half inch and the, what did I say, 13 millimeter. Okay, here we go. You can turn the head of the bolt or the, or the nut, it's irrelevant. Uh, 
you don't need a hammer. You don't need to beat them in or beat them out. Just take your time. This is like flying. It's supposed to be fun. Easy maintenance. Now, how often should you install these bushings? Well, I've I put as much as 550 hours on one uh, MTO, and I've never installed my bushings. But that doesn't mean everybody is going to do that. So you want to put your Tita bolt in there, and I'll show you after this, after I complete this, I'll put the road ahead, the hub bar, and the shims, everything all together. And I'll explain to you, you know, how to check for too much bushing play between the bushing and the Tita bolt. And when you buy a bushing kit, You get a brand new Tita bolt, a nut, a washer, a cotta pin, and you also get all the bushings. And you also get the spacers, the shims. Everything is original. So you would put all those parts together at once and then you will have actually a factory original setup. Same, same setup you got when you first bought the gyroplane. All right, we're getting close to full engagement. Now remember, this, this, is, this is hard to turn. Uh, on the road ahead, the bushings are shorter and it was easier to turn so you could feel how much torque you were putting onto the system. This one here, it's hard most of the way. Once, once this bushing gets about halfway engaged, <clears throat> it requires a lot more torque. So you want to make sure you don't smush it too much. That looks, that looks about good. You can actually, if it's not fully engaged, you can see, uh, you can see space down in between the bushing and the, and the, the t this is the Tita block, and it looks good. So we'll take it off, and we'll pull it off, and, and if it's not, you can retighten it, but this looks good. Looks very good. Okay, good. The bushing has been installed properly. It looks good. The seam is up. All right, the next, uh, next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna install on the road ahead, the hub bar, the new spacers, the shims, I call them, and the Tita bolt. And I'll go through an explanation on how to check for Tita bolt wear on the bushings. Okay, uh, we're going to do the final assembly. We've already replaced the bushings in the road ahead. We've replaced the bushings in the hub bar. Uh, so now we're going to give you an idea. Uh, before you install the bushings, and you just want to check and make sure whether you need new bushings or not. This is an old Tita bolt, but it's, it's not worn. And how you can tell is you can take your fingernail and rub it around there and if there's no ridges. But just for this video, I don't have a new Tita bolt at the moment, but you would put the Tita bolt in here and just see if you can rock it. It's very, very little, not actually, because this has brand new bushings in it. All right, same with the, same with the hub bar. It's kind of tight. So, they have a reamer. Let me get the reamer.
okay, there's a reamer that comes with this kit also. And the reason for that reamer is to ream this bushing out. You can do that by hand, you know, because, because when you press the bushing in, you know, there's got to be some kind of a what they call press fit so it stays tight. And, and sometimes the inside diameter closes in. That's what that seam is for, to allow that bushing to flex as you install it. So you would just take this reamer and it just takes off just a small part of the, of the bushing material. That way you can slide this bushing in here, this Tita boat. Now see, that's really nice and snug. There's no movement at all. In fact, to push it in and push it out, it's, it's got a little friction to it. So that's perfect. So once you install this, and you put the, remember you're using everything uh, for the, that comes in the new Tita kit. Uh, you get in the two bush, the four bushings, the two shims, and the new Tita boat. All right? Okay, here we are with the hub bar assembled uh, from the, the, kit, the Tita boat kit. We got a new Tita bolt. We got the shims that came with the kit. We got new bushings. So everything is solid. It it's really works good. Okay, now we also have a castellated nut. We put the washer on and we tighten the nut on. So it's not a locked nut. But the, the problem I find with this is, you know, you can't tighten this up too tight and you can't keep it too loose. Sometimes the proper tightness, the hole in the bolt doesn't line up with the slot in the nut. So if you back it off to the next slot, now it's too loose. So this is what I recommend, and I've, I've used this for years. I'm going to use a, a nylock nut. There it is there, and that's the description to it. Okay, and then you put the washer on, you put the nylock nut on, and this allows you to really minutely tighten this and initially you want it where where you can move it with your hand of course with the new bushings you probably won't be able to do this but you want it to move freely okay you don't want a lot of torque on that it's, Let's just back it off a little bit. Okay, there you go. You can, you can actually move it with your fingers. All right, at this point, you can finally tune this nut because it's a lock nut. You don't have to worry about it. And I use this type of aviation safety pin. You just put that in there and it's, uh, you snap it in. Now, as you put time on this gyroplane, you know, these bushings, these shims are gonna wear. And, and the first sign of worn shims is you're going to you're going to get more stick shape. So as if this gets loose, you can just you can just snug it up just a little bit, just tad, just just very so slightly, but keeping it where you can move it with your fingers. Because the manual says that you should rotate this teeter bolt, you know, every few hours, uh, just so the wear becomes even on the Tita bolt. And very important though, since this has all been cleaned, you gotta re-lubricate it. So I would uh, grease this until you see some remnants of the grease squirt out of here, and then that's enough. And then maybe every several hours, uh, you would just put a small amount of grease in here. But that's it. Thank you very much for watching.